بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله. Okay, let's start the fourth session about the project, the Megatron project. Uh, first thing first, uh, I need to know. Uh, uh, okay, it's, it's working. Session. I need to know uh, about your progress. What uh, did you do in uh, the manuscript or the language, the Chisa language? The state of your progress. Hello? I think it's work. <coughs> okay. Uh, I need to get your progress, your progress in the manuscript, in the writing of the manuscript, and the, in the learning of Chisa language. The progress, it's an advancement. Can you hear me? <coughs> yes. <coughs> Internet. Okay. I will write it. I need. Uh, to get uh, a progress in uh, the writing of the manuscript and uh, the language uh, Chisel learning. The learning of language. Uh, yes, you can. Normally, you can. You can access the uh, vocal channel. This is the vocal salon vocal. This is the channel vocal. Normally, it's very easy to access the channel. You have just to click on it to access it. Uh, 
I don't know if uh, that works on uh, the phone, but I'm sure it's possible. Surely possible. But I need to get your uh, your pro your progression. I need to get the state of your progression. I need uh, I need to get what you did in this week. This week, you have to know your uh, your progress. We can't work like this. Sir, uh, okay. we finish uh, writing uh, chapter one. Okay, that's uh, that's nice. And the uh, study uh, Chinese language, not yet. Not yet. Mazel ma kemi nash. Mazel ma kemi nash kemi. Okay, that's okay. And do you finish the uh, the writing of the uh, the first chapter? Yes. Okay, you can uh, pass it to me. Oui. Ok, that's fine. I finished the chapter one. Okay. That's fine. <clears throat> okay, that's that's fine. Uh, you have to give it to me. I will try to uh, correct it, and we'll uh, see it later. See it how uh, what changes you have to do later, or what uh, correction you have to do. Okay. Okay. Anyway, let's start now. Let's start the, uh, the Megatron project, the explanation of Megatron project. Okay, the first thing uh, to do is to get uh, the documentation of uh, Megatron. The, the, main, the main basis to study in Megatron is the, uh, the circuit, is the circuit. I will give it to you here, I will send it to you. Uh, you can send it uh, on uh, on Discord directly on Discord. We don't need to use the um, email here. Anyway, I will give you uh, the uh, all the uh, documentation you need to understand my, uh, Megatron. I will explain it today. I will try to explain it today briefly. But it's not. Uh, it will take some time. The first thing is is the circuit. The circuit is in logism, and uh, there it is. Do you have logism? Okay. If you don't have logism, yes. Do you have a response? Okay, that's fine. Anyway, I will give it to you in case uh, in case uh, your friend uh, will need it, and uh, you will, you will uh, we will study. We have uh, I don't know if you uh, read the uh, the definition of Megatron. We have uh, three main circuits. The first one, uh, the, the the two first one are about Gigatron, but uh, uh, our work concerns Megatron. We are trying try to work on a Megatron. Megatron is different. Megatron is different from Gigatron. Okay, you have the circuit and you have the simulator and you can open it and see what is really Megatron. Anyway, I will try uh, to explain the working on uh, of uh, Megatron based on Logic based on the schematics of Logic uh, first thing first, we have uh, this architecture, Megatron, what is it? It is uh, an architecture, it is a simplified architecture, and uh, we can see 
on the on the main on the main on the main website of the designer okay you can see the uh, the website here and get some information okay you have the website here and we have the design of Mega, uh, Gigatron Megatron is an evolution of Gigatron uh, what we did in Megatron we reduced the number of gates the number of ICs we call these ICs integrated circuits we minimized this and we uh, changed the display Megatron use what we call a VGA this kind of display is a node display it was called VGA in Megatron we don't use that we eliminate that we use uh, a small screen to display whatever we need with our architecture this is the second uh, this is the second evolution uh, from uh, Gigatron to Megatron uh, the third if I remember well we have added uh, a, a more sophisticated input output unit we added a more sophisticated we can add uh, for instance uh, keyboard uh, you have to know that keyboard was not directly allowed by uh, Gigatron it was allowed but uh, but indirectly in Megatron we can now add uh, a keyboard directly and other uh, input output devices by default, Gigatron uses an iPad, uh, no, an, uh, what do you call that? A joypad. For, for, uh, he's using a joypad uh, for input, like input. Okay, anyway, this is the, uh, the website, the main website of Gigatron. And uh, we need to understand its architecture. Uh, first thing first, Megatron use RAM and ROM. The ROM is about 65, uh, I don't remember exactly, okay? The, uh... Okay, one minute. Okay, the Megatron use, uh, yes, this is it, use uh, 64 kilo uh, word of memory. I'm telling here word because one word is equal to 16 bits. It, ha he, uh, it has a memory, a main memory RAM of 64K word. Each word is a 16 bit. Uh, it uses 32 uh, octet, a uh, bit, byte, sorry, byte of uh, main memory, but in a Megatron we double that to uh, 64 uh, mega octet. It uses a clock speed of uh, 6.25 megahertz. Okay, this is uh, mainly the whole architecture. Uh, for the micro architecture, the micro architecture means the details. We have uh, we have this micro architecture. We have what we call that uh, the data path. I don't know if you do. Do you remember the uh, the data path? We studied the data path in uh, computer architecture. Do you remember that? Do you remember the definition of data path? Can you give me the definition of data path? What is the definition of data path?
Can you answer me? Sorry, sir, I don't say I remember. You don't remember? Uh, did we study uh, study the data part? I don't remember. Uh, in the uh, second year, that we study it. So, can you have a look? Normal, we can Okay, who's the milk? Man, she's a text. Okay, I remember that. I remember when uh, we studied uh, the uh, the global construction of a CPU. A CPU is mainly uh, constructed upon three parts. We need three parts to design to construct a CPU. We need. Okay. Okay. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. We'll try to understand it. I will try to uh, to explain it briefly. Okay, let's see. Let's take uh, a board. I will design and try to draw what is a CPU. Okay, let's suppose we have this board. Let's use it like a, a whiteboard. Okay. With my pencil. Have a pencil. Okay, we have. Uh, I have to give you a, 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 a global overview. We have the main part of the computer is a, a CPU. We are interested in the CPU because our uh, main architecture is a CPU. The, the other parts uh, are very small, they are not uh, important, but the CPU is the main part. Inside the CPU we have what we call a UC, a CU, sorry, CU, CU is what we call the control unit. The control unit of a processor, this is a CPU, this is a processor, this is a, a CPU. All of this is a CPU, all of this is a CPU. Inside the CPU, we have the CU, control unit. It's called the, the control, the control, sorry, the control unit. We have the control unit, CU. And we have the second part, the ALU, arithmetic and logic unit, the part responsible for um, the process, the, uh, the calculation of arithmetic and logic operations, and we have the data path. The data path. The data path. Each, ta each part. Data path. Each part has uh, has its main job. For instance, the CU is the unit, the control unit, is the unit responsible for sending the signals to other units on how to behave. The control unit is the controller. It control uh, the, other, the other's part of the CPU. Uh, and we have the CU inside the inside the Megatron. I'm talking about CU because we, uh, we have to study it, we have to use it. Uh, we have the data path. This is the data path. 
This is what you call data path. The, the schematic, this schematic is what we call data path. All those uh, circuits, this path is the data path, is the data path. And we have the RU, this is the RU. And this is the CU, this is the CU. And we have the RU, the unit responsible for calculating the uh, calculating the uh, the arithmetic and logic operations. Uh, anyway, do we have questions uh, till now? You have questions. You have questions? It's clear. Okay. Okay. And we have our uh, our Megatron. Megatron is an architecture of I have to design just to understand. We have a memory called ROM. You know what exactly what is the ROM? ROM of 64K of 16 bits. This is the memory when you have to store your programs. Operating system programs have to be they have to be stored here. We have the second memory, the main memory, the RAM. RAM of same 64 k o uh, k sorry k b kilobyte 64 of kilobytes it is enhancement uh, compared to gigatron gigatron uh, has only uh, 32 k but uh, in, uh, megatron has uh, 64 k we have uh, uh, eight instruction, eight type of instruction. We have, uh, we have to give you some schematics here just to uh, to follow. We have eight kind of instructions. In this part, I'm talking about the architecture, the architecture point of view. Uh, where is it? I need to find a... Okay. We have the instruction set. The instruction we have load LD means load in assembly. We have the logical end, we have the logical OR, we have the XOR, the addition, the subtraction, we have the store, and we have the branch. The branch is used to jump, the jump or the branch. Those are the eight main instructions. Each instructions, each instruction has eight address in what we call address in mode. Address in mode, the definition of address in mode is how the instruction will use the data. There are different ways to use the data. For instance, I will explain that uh, later. But for instance, this, uh, this addressing mode use the IC. Uh, IC is uh, what we call the accumulator register. I will explain that later. And you use the address of X. X also is a register. I will explain that later. But uh, we have uh, uh, overall eight, uh, eight accessing mode or addressing mode. We have eight of them. And we have four, four uh, sources of data. 
we see that later we'll explain that later for each instruction we have eight mode to access the data we can access the data from uh, for instance uh, from uh, the memory the main memory the ram uh, from uh, uh, the inputs like here from uh, the accumulator or from the program d is the program is part of the program anyway this is an overview uh, this is uh, somehow complicated to explain but we will explain it uh, step by step step by step we will explain we will understand how we can use those uh, instruction uh, in the overall in the global view we have eight instructions uh, each instructions contains eight uh, accessing mode addressing mode or accessing mode it's, uh, it's exactly the same it's exactly the same and we have four uh, uh, data sources i will explain that four data four ways to access data anyway this is the overall table to get to use the uh, assembly instruction to program uh, and and we have now uh, we need we uh, we have to dive to understand the microarchitecture to understand the microarchitecture we have this and we have to use we uh, we use a much more simple picture schematic this one i guess i don't remember we have no this is not this one this is the physical physical layout of the uh, the bigger trailer i don't remember where did they put this picture Okay, this is it. This is the picture. Uh, from diagram, I will put it. Uh, I'll give it to you just to get. Uh, a better access to the to the diagram okay this is the file this is the picture let's see this picture let's try to study this picture this is a picture of gigatron they are practically identical megatron and gigatron they they are practically uh, identical in the micro architecture there are just some differences we will try to study that later Anyway, the global microarchitecture is like this. We have first, we will start first from here. This is what we call PC. Now, PC normally it's a well known word in the vocabulary of a computer architecture. Normally, you know what is a PC. I have to give you this question. What is a PC? What is the definition of PC in computer architecture? What is PC? Uh, like a register yes okay. this is uh, this is not exactly a register but uh, is a counter yes exactly exactly the, your friend uh, said it this is a counter 
A counter is a, a special kind of register. It's not a normal register. A register is a small memory that can store uh, values. That can store values. A counter is the same. It can store the value, but at the same time, he can increment. He can add one increment to the counter. The counter can add one each uh, step of the clock. The counter can do this. One, two, three, he can count. One, two, three, four, etc. A counter is a, a very simple circuit. He can count. Uh, uh, he can count in binary. He can count in a binary. Okay, the first we have here a counter. The first component is a counter. We call it PC, pro program counter. PC uh, for program counter. Our program counter is uh, about 16 bits. It is about 16 bits. 16 bits means if we have 16 bits, I will take my calculator. Where is my calculator? Okay. Let's try to do some calculation here. If I take 2 of the power of... Uh, where is the power? 2 of the power of uh, 16. We get 65,536. We get uh, uh, this number. This number actually represents... This number represents... Uh, Represent what? Can anyone tell what uh, this number represents? This number represents uh, the capacity of this ROM. This ROM is 64, exactly is 65, and uh, I don't remember, 65, 536. 536. Do you understand the PC? The PC is directly connected. This output is directly connected to the address of the ROM and the input of address of the ROM. Why? Because uh, when you address, when you give a value to the address of the ROM, the ROM will throughout will put out the value of the cell addressed by this value. I don't know if you are understanding what I'm saying or not. Um, okay, I will explain it uh, differently. We have uh, this part is a counter, and we have uh, the counter is directly connected. Okay, I have to zoom. Is directly connected to the ROM, to our ROM. Is directly connected. That means. Uh, each value, each 16 bit value here will be the address of the ROM. The ROM behave works this way. The ROM, you have to give an address to the ROM, and the ROM will output the value of the address itself, of the address itself. Did you understand? Or I have to uh, make an example. I can make an example in Logisim briefly to understand how the ROM work, works. We have a ROM here, for instance. We have uh, this ROM. This is a small ROM. Okay, let's zoom. This is a small ROM. You have to understand that. It's not difficult, but you have to understand it. You have, this is the entry address. I will uh, make a small uh, ROM just to uh, to be uh, okay to be uh, just to simplify the example. We have here a ROM of uh, a ROM of uh, sixteen cell. Those are the cells. Those are the cells. Okay, let's edit it. Those are the cells. We have sixteen cells. Why we have 16 cells? Because our address is 4. 2 uh, power of 4, we have 16. We have 16. And we have the output of the ROM. The output of the ROM will give the value of 
of the cell. For instance, I will change the cells inside the ROM. Those are the cells. I will change them just to take uh, a correct example. Okay, just uh, random values. If I take, for instance, this is the address zero. It will point to the, the first cell. And the, the, the continent of the first, the first cell is uh, 12. Uh, and uh, Uh, sorry, I have to change something here. Data width is is four is four, and uh, it is, I will change the continent here. Continent here. Okay, we have one, two, four, five. Anyway, random values. Random values. Random values. Okay, save. Save. Oh, yeah, yeah. I have to repeat it again. If I take ROM. And we have the input of four bits. I will change this for this one, two, three. It's not changing here. Uh, this is weird. Anyway, for if you give the, the idea is this. The idea is this. We have the address. The address. Uh, uh, with the four bits. If I give the address here, you, you can say you can see that the uh, the cell is highlighted. If I take, for instance, the fourth address, the fourth, uh, this is the value four in binary. It will choose this uh, this cell, this cell, and the uh, the ROM will output the value of the cell like this. Like this. If I change the value here, for instance, to I will get two on the outside. This means we are pointing to the cell. Anyway, we have a counter here. The counter is put in this way here, and he has to give its value to the address of the ROM to output the value of the cell. Did you understand? Did you understand? Yes, yes. Okay. In our... Uh, uh, let me ask you, uh, what is the capacity of our ROM? 16 uh, no it's not 16 it's uh, uh, this number the capacity what is the capacity of our uh, rod is uh, for for 64 64 it's 64 k 64 k okay it's 64 k to address 64 K cell. We need an address of how many bits? There is many bits, but I believe he has a sound card. Yes, how many bits do I need to address this 64K? How many bits do I need? How many? 16 bits. 16. Oh, yeah, yes. the 16 bits. It says bit. 
16 bits. We will need the 16 bits. Why? How did you know that? Kfarift. This is a simple rule. We are using the rule of this rule. 2 power 16 is equal to uh, 264k. And each value of those 16 bits represents a unique address in our row. Uh, do you understand what I'm uh, explaining here? Okay, we have to continue, we don't have much time. Anyway, we have uh, the PC. The PC is a counter. The counter, the output of the counter is 16 bit. The 16 bit has to go to the address of the ROM. To go to the address of the ROM. Why? Because uh, uh okay why because uh we need to address each cell inside the ROM each cell inside the ROM anyway why we are using a counter because this is the program counter the PC we need to get, after the finishing of each instruction we have to go to the next instruction we have to add one, we have to increment, we have to increment our address and to get to the next, the next uh, instruction, the next instruction. Okay, anyway, uh, inside the ROM, I have to design that. Inside the ROM, inside the ROM, this is the ROM, and we have many, many cells. We have 64K, 64K, each cell is about 16 bits, each cell, each cell is not 8 bits, it's not a byte, c'est pas un octet, it's not a byte, it's 16 bits, why? Because it is divided on two parts, each cell is divided on two parts, one part for the code of the instruction, I will write it here, for the code of the instruction and the other part is for the data for the data of the instruction of the instruction we have two parts we have part for the instruction and part for the data okay we have these two outputs then from the ROM we have this output from for the instructions and this for the data and this for the data. Uh, we have uh, here what we call a register. This register is also well known. Normally, we already study it on the uh, course of computer architecture on ADO. Computer architecture, normally, you know what is uh, IR. And we have the data will be saved inside a register called D. A register called D. Okay. IR stands for instruction register. Instruction instruction register. Instruction register. And we have a D 8 bit to contain the data of each instruction. We have 16 bit for each cell. The 16 bit we have the instruction with uh, its data. Anyway, the outside uh, the, um, the output of the IR uh, goes to what we call the CU. What is the CU? What is the CU? It's a question. What is the CU? Abdus Salam. 
What's it? Any CU control. Well, uh, okay, that, that, okay, the CU is the control unit. The, uh, the code of each instruction goes to this CU. Uh, we have uh, eight bit to describe each instruction. And uh, if, you, if, you, if you remember what we did here, we have three bits for the code of the instruction, two bits for the uh, bus axis, and we have three bits for the mode axis. We have three plus two plus three, we have uh, we have eight bit. We have eight bit. This uh, this uh, this decomposition, this uh, slicing of the bits. We will we'll understand that later. How an instruction is composed. Anyway, anyway, we have the instructions goes the the, the, the eight bit of the instructions goes to the CU. Control it. Right? Goes to uh, the control unit, and the control unit is a, a combinational circuit. Then, if you combine a combinational circuit, the combinational circuit, if you remember how it works, it will immediately throw its output. This, uh, this is the way a combinational circuit works. You know that normally. You have. Uh, where is uh, my pencil? Uh, you have a combinational circuit. We have uh, many inputs and we have uh, many outputs, multiple outputs. If you give uh, some data here, some values here, it will immediately process the, uh, the data and produce uh, some values here, depending on the design of the combinational circuit. Anyway, we have to understand that our combinational circuit is also, uh, sorry, our uh, control unit also is a combinational circuit. Then, when you give the code, the 8 bit of the instruction, the, uh, the CU is a combinational circuit, will decode the instruction and will throw out what we call the control signals, the control signals, many signals, multiple signals, let's see them here. They are well expressed here, they are well, uh, well uh, drawn here, illustrated here. Okay, this is the entry of the entrance of the instruction, the instruction come here, and uh, the instruction is decoded here, and uh, for each instruction, uh, multiple uh, controlling signals are fired. Fired um, uh, means fired means they are output. They are output. Many signals we have: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-two. We have twenty-two signals. Those signals are used to control the overall data path. They are used to control the overall data path. For instance, for instance, if I can check, for instance, this signal, uh, the IE, I don't know, what is the IE? Okay, let's say the, this one, for instance, this one. This signal is here, it's connected here, this is the same. They are connected, this one and this one are the same uh, signal, the same wire, the same wire. Uh, this one is connected with this one, and this one is responsible for controlling the RAM. This is uh, the signal. If it's one, it allows the RAM to output its value. This is uh, output enable. OE means output enable. If this, this is a control signal. If this signal is at one, it will allow the RAM to output its value on this bus here on this bus, and the other and the others uh, signals do the same thing. Each signals each each signal is a control signal for uh, one component of 
the data path. For instance, we have here XL, uh, YL, sorry, YL, XL. They are used to write to write the data on those two registers, and they are and they are here. Here they are. Here they are. They are uh, when they are fired. They enable the writing of data on inside uh, those two registers, for instance, and the same for other uh, for the other elements of data path. The, uh, this is the idea. This is the idea on how to use the CC. Uh, do you have questions? This is clear. Is this clear or should I explain it again? Okay, we have the second part. This part. Oh, okay, I will. This this part. We have this part, the data part. The data part. This is a register that. Uh, this is the register who uh, that will store the data part of the instruction. This is the recession who store the uh, the data of uh, the uh, the instruction. The data is here and can be used in two different ways. It can be uh, used in two different ways. The first way is uh, being used directly inside this bus. This bus. This bus, this bus is called the B bus, the B bus. Why it is called the B bus? Because it is the input of the B, input of the ALU. We have the ALU here. This is A and this is B. And this bus will always uh, spread, will always uh, through its output, its output on the, the B entry. The B inputs. We call this the blue bus. The blue bus is called the B bus or the data bus. The same thing is the same thing. Anyway, the data can be uh, sent to the B bus. The data bus can be sent to the data bus uh, going through this component. This component is called what we call, uh, I don't remember exactly, uh, this is, uh, I have to remember this, this is uh, a three-state buffer, I guess. Yes, this is a three-state buffer, yes. Mm, you can see, I don't know if you remember the three-state buffer. The three-state buffer here are used like a drivers, like a driver. A driver means that this component, uh, what is it? Okay. This component can block the access of the data from this register to this bus or can allow it. He has he has what? He has the control. This, uh, this device, uh, this uh, circuit is used to control the access to the, to the bus, to the data bus. Uh, and it's controlled by this signal, DE. DE is a control signal. It is uh, generated here. It is generated uh, from the CU, from the CU. Anyway, this uh, uh, the only thing to understand here is this uh, circuit is uh, 
uh, is uh, an array of is uh, a number of uh, three state buffers they are used to control the access of data from the D register to the bus to the bus the main job of this circuit is to control to access to the bus okay uh, do you have question uh, for, for 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 this uh, particular part you have questions is that clear or should I repeat or do you have some uh, dark points not well understood uh, points Okay. All clear. Okay. It's clear. Uh, uh, is that simple? What do you think of that? Is that simple or difficult? Okay. Okay. Okay, the second way, this way of the data can be used inside MAU. MAU. MAU stands for memory addressing unit. This unit, this part, uh, this is also a combinational circuit it is used to control the synthesis the synthesis of the address. This, the MU, has the job to create, to compose the address. The address of what? The address of the RAM. Our RAM is of 16-bit address, means that our RAM is of 64K bytes. K bytes, like explained before. Okay, let's... Uh, give a simple schematic for our RAM, for instance. This is the ROM. Where is the ROM? Okay, uh, it was deleted. Anyway, we have the RAM. Our RAM. The ROM is about uh, for Megatron. Uh, for Megatron, it is 65k. B kilobits. We have 64k cells inside. Each cell is about each cell is about uh, eight bits. Each cell is about eight bits. It's it it is the normal. Uh, the normal use of memory, the normal use, the normal, uh, the normal uh, width of uh, of a cell of a memory, eight bits. It's different from the ROMs of from the ROM. We have eight bits here, and we have sixty four K B. We need 
to address 64 bits, we need, like the, uh, the ROM, we need 16 bits of address. 16 bits of address. Those 16 bits are here, are generated, are created, uh, synthesized from the MAU. The MAU. The MAU is the unit responsible for synthesizing uh, the address. The address can be formed from three different sources. We have three sources to compose, to create the address. The address of the cell inside the RAM. To address a cell inside the RAM, each cell has 16 address. To address a cell, we need to compose it, we need to create it. We have the three sources. We have the D, the, uh, the value that comes with the instruction, we have the Y, and we have the X registers. We have the three main sources to construct our address. And the AMAU uh, compose synthesizer uh, the address used by the RAM. How it is done? I don't know if I have to explain that or not. If we, say, if we uh, see, for instance, uh, an instruction, we can say, for instance, uh, this one, this one. The address mode or the access mode, we can see here between the brackets Y and D. That means that the address used in this instruction, the data used in this instruction, its address is formed by D and Y, the composition of D and Y. The address are formed this way. I have to, uh, to explain it here. They are formed this way. We have 16 bit. We have 16 bit and this part is 8 bit and this part is 8 bit in this example for instance we we choose y and d y and d then the uh, the, arch the architecture we choose this value and this value and create the 16 uh, bit address and throw it to the RAM and put it on the input of uh, the RAM, the address input of the RAM. Do you understand? This part is uh, mandatory, is, is uh, important to generate the address of the cell, of the data inside the RAM. This uh, element is the main element to give us multiple addressing mode. Addressing mode um, in architecture in architecture means that we have many ways to uh, to address the data. This is what we call addressing mode in architectures. If you study an architecture, for instance, you have in each architecture you have multiple addressing mode. Addressing mode means the way to access the data. This part, this component, is the main component to create the address. And it is controlled, just to well understand, it is controlled by those two signals. Those two signals are generated by the CU, of course. And when they are generated, they are generated when the instructions are decoded. The instructions are decoded, you know exactly what, uh, the, the architecture knows exactly what this instruction does and synthesize or generate those signals, those two signals to control, to control the MR.
to control what kind of addressing mode our, our architecture will use. You have to understand, and those you have to understand this. Uh, we uh, we added those two uh, registers. We have the Y and we have the X. Uh, to be to be honest, this is not a register. This is a counter. This is a counter. This is a re register that can count, that can increment, that can increment. This is a counter. And the three sources we have three. You have the three sources. The MI use the, those three sources to generate uh, the 16-bit address to the RAM. Uh, it is generated depending on the addressing mode. We have eight addressing mode, and each time we generate a different combination. In this part we have a D, uh, in this part you have X, in this part you have uh, Y, D, Y, X, D, 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 and X, uh, oh, sorry, Y and X plus plus. This is why I told you this is, uh, this is uh, a, a counter. And this is mainly used for uh, instruction to, uh, to browse uh, an array. For parkour and tableau, it's going to be used for parkour and tableau. They are used to browse an array. The X is mainly used for that. They are special instructions used for that. Uh, is that clear? Is that clear? Did you understand that? Or should I repeat it? Or if you have a special point, you can point it, you can uh, mention it. If you have a uh, special point to repeat, I can repeat it. Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you, can, you have just to remember, X and Y are special registers and they are used only for the, the creation, the composition, the creation of the addresses, of the addresses. They are not used for data, they are used for addresses. We can't find the, the result here. Okay, the, those two are used to, uh, to be used like an address. To be used, X and Y are used to generate the address. They are used. They are special register used uh, like uh, to contain addresses. Only addresses. Okay, that's fine. We have the RAM, of course, and the RAM is connected also to our data bus. Are connected to our data bus. Our data bus is of uh, a huge importance. I will explain that. We have our RAM, and uh, on the RAM you can do, this is what we call a read, and uh, this way is called write. And those two operations are controlled by two uh, control signals. They are controlled by the two, uh, this is uh, output enable, and this is write enable. Output for the read, and the write for the write of data from the bus of course from the bus of course this part this uh, we have mainly mainly in this architecture we have two buses i will talk uh, now uh, of the bus the importance of the bus. we have this bus the data bus this blue bus this is the data bus you can see it it's very clear and we have the second one we have this one we have the result bus this is this bus. This orange bus is used to put the result after the, uh, the calculation. The result is here, and the data before the calculation is here, and after the calculation is here. The calculation is done by the ALU, of course. The ALU is the uh, the main component to do the calculation. 
The RU is the main component to do the calculation. The RU has two inputs, B and A, and the entrance B comes directly from this bus, from the data bus. And the data bus, I will talk about the E later. I will explain that later. But we have to focus now on the B, on the B input. The B input is the is what this bus contains. It's the uh, it's what this bus contains. This bus can get the value from the can get the value from the RAM or uh, write the value to the RAM. But let's say now the uh, what we can get the information, and we can get the information from here. This is the input. We can get uh, this is the third uh, source. We can get uh, on the bus on this bus. We can get the input, and uh, we can get from here. And here is uh, what we call the accumulator. The accumulator is a special register. The accumulator is a special register. This is the register that contains the uh, the A operand of each instruction. Each instruction, whatever the instruction you choose, we have multiple instructions here. Each instruction, the A operand, the A operand. Do you remember what is an operand? If we take an operation, for instance, let's uh, let's do an example. If you have an operation, for instance, you have one plus two. This is the A operand, and this is the B operand. In our RU, the A is always the accumulator. Is always the accumulator. This architecture is designed like this. Many architecture works like this. Even our PCs, the Intel PCs, the Intel PCs use this accumulator, means that always the first operand is the accumulator. The second is different. The, 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 the second uh, can be different, can be get from different sources. Yes? You have questions? Okay, you got the. Uh, okay, that's good. That's good. You got the uh, the microphone. You can use it. You have to talk, guys. You have to talk. You have to answer. Uh, you have to uh, uh, give some questions. Just to uh, to get uh, to uh, to get a good session. Anyway, you have this IC. This IC, uh, I said, always contain the A operand. The A operand. Uh, could be put on the data bus. Anyway, we have four sources for our uh, data bus. I repeat, we have, you can uh, put the data from the D or from the RAM or from the input device. Our input device in the Gigatron is, uh, is a controller, is a controller. But we can, in uh, Megatron, we use, use a keyboard, the keyboard. And we can get the data from here, from the IC, from the register that contains the A value of the, of the RU, of the RU. Okay, we have, we have four sources, we have four sources. Of course, we have four signals. I will point to them, this is important. We have four signals, those signals, to control which component controls the bus. At any moment, only one source or only one component can put its value on the bus. They can, uh, it's impossible uh, for two or three or four devices uh, throw in their data on the bus at the same time. It's impossible. It's impossible. Only one, only one can put its value on the, um, on the bus. Which one 
this is controlled by by those by those signals those i will exp and we'll explain that in the next session those four signals are responsible for controlling which component should control the bus should put uh, its value on the bus okay and this bus can be used okay we'll uh, delete that and uh, it the, the can the, the the value of the bus can be used first here to write uh, on the ram for the store instruction for instance for the store instruction can be used uh, of course here used as uh, the b input of the alu that means that the alu can get uh, from uh, from four different uh, sources and uh, third the value of the bus can be used by the pc now i have to give you uh, a question why we have to change the value of PC do you remember the PC is the counter that contain the address of the instruction and in some situations in some instructions we need to change the value of PC I will give you this question when we need which instruction need to change the value of pc uh, normally it's a very simple instructions uh, it's a very simple uh, question okay is have can you uh, can you use the, your mic Sir, uh, when the output uh, Z equals Z? No. The output uh, is equal Z. This, uh, this part, we use Z when the, uh, the component don't output its value. When the component has to uh, block its value, he will uh, output a Z value, Z value, Z value. Uh, okay. I joined the vocal section, uh, session, but uh, don't know why I can't use the mic. You have to configure it. You have to configure it from here. There are some configuration to do. I don't know. I never used uh, Discord on a phone. I don't know how to do that. But try to uh, to configure it uh, with your. Uh, you have to configure it to use it. Or you can ask your friend uh, later. Anyway, the question is that, I will repeat the question. The question is very simple. We have the blue bus called the data bus. The data bus, uh, its value, the value inside the data bus can be used by PC. Can change in, in some situations or in some instructions. In some instructions, some instructions have to change the value of PC. If I put this, that means I change. That, that means the PC can change it and take the value uh, of uh, the data bus. Which instruction or which situation we have to change the, the value of PC? Can you give me a can you give me a situation uh, an example of? A situation when we have to change the PC in computer architecture.
Okay, anyway, I have to give uh, the, the answer. We don't have time. The answer is that... Uh, the answer is that... Uh, the jump instruction. If we uh, see the list of our instruction. This uh, BCC. BCC is... Uh, uh, BCC are the uh, jump instructions or branch instruction. The instruction where you jump. When you jump, you have to change the address of the next instruction. To change the address of the next instruction, you have to change what? The PC. You have to change the PC. Is that clear? I will repeat. Uh, we have a value here. You have a value inside the bus. We don't know the value comes from, uh, where the value comes from. Uh, it could be from D, from RAM, from input, or from AC. Uh, anyway, it's not important. The important is that uh, some instructions, in this case, uh, the branch instruction, BBC, uh, so, so, sorry, BCC, or uh, jump instruction, the jump instruction are uh, the instructions that take a jump for the next instructions and to take this jump you need to change what to change the address inside the PC inside PC is that clear PC normally in the usual instruction in a normal instruction, we'll increment. We'll increment and go to the next uh, instruction to the to the uh, by uh, by incrementing the value of PC. We go to the next instruction, but by changing the value of PC in some situation, of course, in some instruction, of course, uh, then we have to jump. To another, we have to execute the jump instruction. We have to jump to another address. It's not now the uh, the neighbor instruction. The next the, the the next instruction. We have to jump to another address. And to do that, we have to use uh, to use the jump instruction or uh, BCC instruction. Uh, of course, the command to do that. Are where are they? Uh, I guess yes. Those two signals are the, those two signals are responsible uh, for the input of the value from the outside, from the bus, from the bus. Is that clear? Is that clear? Is that clear? Normally we finish this part. Normally I explained all these parts and we have to go to the next. I have to explain this left part. You have questions, is that clear? Should I continue? Okay, I have to continue, we don't have much time. Yes. Okay. The next part we have the ALU. We have the ALU and we have the B input of the ALU. You have A input of the ALU. I told you before, when we use uh, the... Uh, when we have to use the Gigatron assembly, you have to remember that A is always saved stocked is always saved on the ac accumulator this is called accumulator is always saved inside the accumulator register this is always the case this is always the case when you have to do an operation inside the rlu you have to remember that i that, that a is stored inside uh, accumulator and b b it's from this bus and, and directly can be uh, taken from four different sources. Four different sources. 
Anyway, this is uh, the accumulator. The accumulator also has the job to always save the result. This is the, uh, the, the ALU output contains the result and this is the result bus this is the result bus and in many cases in the in practically all cases you have to save to save the uh, the result in ICC this is uh, the reason we call it accumulator it accumulate the accumulator first it is used like the A operand and second it is always used like the result register the result register it has, it has the, those two jobs and this is why we call it accumulator it accumulates the result it accumulates the result many processors work this way uh, even the Intel processors the Intel's the Intel processors use it in our PCs, use uh, the accumulator. The accumulator, this is a register, use it like the A operand and at the same time always stores the result of the ALU. Okay, the accumulator can go, the result of the accumulator can go to the output. This is the output. The output here. Uh, I don't think it's a register. I think I don't remember exactly about the uh, the Gigatron. Megatron is different. Megatron we use the register, but in Gigatron uh, it's a kind of an IC to our. Uh, it's a, I don't remember. I guess it is. A, uh, let's see. I think it's three state buffer. I don't exactly remember. This is the the Megatron. Let's open the uh, Gigatron. Gigatron. Where is it? Ah, it's, it's a register. Sorry, it's a register. Okay, okay, it's a register. It's a register. Okay, this is a register that contains the output, and the output will be after used in audio and used on the, uh, the LED. The blinking LEDs. I don't know if you understand what is a LED or not. The LED is this. What is uh... this? Uh, where are the LEDs? I have to get the image of Megatron. The LEDs are here. I don't remember. We have four LEDs. They are used. In a gigatron, gigatron images. Okay, we have gigatron here, and we have four LED. Where are they? I don't remember where they put the lead. That, there, uh, here they are. Here they are. We have four lead, and they are used to uh, to output some information. We have four. Those four are controlled here. Blinking lead. They are controlled here, and we have the audio is controlled here too. And the output is from the IC, from the accumulator. What we have, we have also uh, the input. The input uh, also is, is uh, if I remember, is a shifter. Is a shifter. And the Gigatron, Megatron is different, but uh, we will uh, talk about that later. But for uh, Gigatron, the input is a shifter. If you remember what is a shifter, the shifter is. Uh, the shifter is a simple circuit a simple circuit that can this is a simple 
register that can get uh, multiple bits in parallel uh, sorry in the in a, in a serial form in serial and uh, output uh, them in parallel like this we call that a shifter if we uh, studied my course i talked about i explained what is a shifter you have to see my course i explained what is a shifter in this part uh, we are using a shifter why we are using shifter in uh, gigatron we are using a shifter because gigatron use a, a controller a nest controller it is using uh, to input uh, a nest uh, controller this is a nest controller he use a control like this is uh, is using a control like this and the, the protocol of this controller uh, puts data one by one to this shifter and this shifter will put the overall uh, grouped grouped data on 8 bit on the bus on the bus Uh, what we have there we have also this part this part this is an output register I guess yes an output register uh, I'm not sure but something like this it's not important this uh, we will not use this register in Megatron this register is used for video to output the video of Megatron of Gigatron sorry those kind of videos those kind of uh, videos what's left and we have of course x and y if you remember well x and y they are used to generate the, the new address the uh, to synthesize the address and uh, x and y generally they are changed by the result of the alley it depends on the instruction but the result of the alley is the only way to change the values of x and y x and y are filled with the value uh, outputs uh, the value uh, generated by the alley okay and we have uh, an important thing here to uh, notice is this this connection this connection is the same this is an entrance y y is represent an address and this address could be stored on the pc on the pc on the PC to be to explain exactly what's happening here let's take a small diagram let's draw a small diagram we have here 8 bits and here 8 bits this is the PC the program counter this is the what we call the list significant bit and this is the uh, how do we call that the most significant bit this is the uh, the smallest bit and this is the greatest bit in a value in a binary value in a binary bit when we uh, see a binary value we have the first bit here the second bit etc etc the the the, the small the, the the first bit are called the least significant bit the least the more least, the bit the more significant and we have the most significant bits here this part this part PC. This part can be changed by the bus, by the data bus, DB, by the blue bus. And this part can be changed by Y, by Y. 
Okay, let's see again. We have Y that can change the most significant parts of the PC of the address, of the instruction address, and we have uh, the database can change the least significant parts of the PC, of the instruction address. And th those two uh, modifications, those two modifications are done uh, specially with the jump instruction or branch instructions. They are solely, solely used in the uh, jump instruction or uh, branch instructions. Okay, I guess we, uh, I guess I explained uh, uh, briefly the overall architecture. The overall architecture. Do you have questions? This is important. I know it's not easy. I know it's not easy. Uh, I didn't explain the details yet. We have to explain the details the next time, inshallah. But this is an overview of all the parts of the data path. This is the data path. This is the data path. All those paths called the data path. And we have the CU and we have the ALU. You have to program that in Chisel. You have to recreate that in Chisel. And you have to understand exactly which part, uh, each part, uh, the nature of each part. For instance, this is a counter, this is a ROM, this is a register, this is a register, this is a combinational circuit, this is a, a three state buffer, this is the RAM, this is a combinational circuit, the nature is nature is combinational circuit, this is a register, this is a counter. This is a register, but uh, this is not important because it's uh, in existence in the uh, Megatron. Uh, this is RU. You, you know what is the RU, the combination circuit. This is a register. This is a register. This is a three-state buffer. That uh, I didn't talk about that. This is this uh, part is like this. This is, this is identical to this. The, this is a three-state buffer that allow uh, the value of AC to be thrown to the uh, data bus. Uh, we have a shifter, this is a shifter, and we did not use the shifter in our implementation. I don't remember, I don't remember. I don't remember exactly what, uh, this is different. Our input, our uh, input, output, input device, it's different from the Gigatron. It's totally different. It's more complicated, but it is more advanced. Anyway, we will see that later. Okay, and we have all of this, all of this. Uh, you have to understand that those signals are the control signals. They are all generated from the CU. They are generated from the CU. And that's all. And that's all. This is what we call a microarchitecture. This is the microarchitecture of the Megatron. This is the microarchitecture of the Megatron. Do you have questions? Do you have questions? I guess we uh, should stop here. Yes, we have to stop here. Do you have questions? Uh, I have to give you some documentation. You will need uh, documentation to understand that. Documentation. Okay, the main documentation to understand that uh, is uh, some links. I do have some links to give you. Uh, what is it? Megatron. Uh... Okay, I have to give you this, uh, this uh, PDF. You have to see this PDF. You have to prepare it, uh, to prepare it for the, uh, the next session. You have to read that. You need to read this PDF. 
it's uh, it's important to read that. Uh, keyboard. What is this? Ah, we have the board. Schematics. Okay, you have. I have to give you the electronic schematics. Okay, schematics and uh, some references. <coughs> Input instructions. Okay, I have to give you some references. Okay. You can watch, I don't remember exactly what we did here, but you can watch this just to understand. Yes, yeah, some explanation of the architecture by the, the designers, designers of the architecture. Okay. Uh, anyway, the main idea, the main idea, the main purpose of this uh, session is to understand the microarchitecture and to understand that you have uh, you need to implement this microarchitecture using chisel you have to implement this by using chisel you have to, to understand that there are some details the other uh, what you will do the next session we have uh, to explain how the instructions are created from this microarchitecture. This microarchitecture generates the instruction, uh, generates the, the, uh, the execution of instruction, and we have to understand that the next session. The next session. Uh, chapter one. You have to give me chapter one. To to uh, to see it, you can give it to me by email if you want. You don't have to uh, to give it to me now, but you have uh, in this week uh, before the end of this week, you have uh, tomorrow tomorrow you have to give me the chapter one by email. I need to see it because we have to do some correction. Uh, I don't know if it's well written or not, but uh, in many cases we need to correct the chapter to uh, uh, to be readable, to be ready, to be uh, ready. Do you have questions? Do you have questions? Did you understand what we did? It's somehow complicated. I know it's not simple. You can ask questions. If you don't have questions, I have to stop the session here.
Okay, okay. I will stop here. Thank you very much. Barakallahu feekum. We will uh, do the next section uh, next week, inshallah. <coughs> okay, thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum. Sahaftarkum.